Yo, I, I gotta check engine light, guys. Uh, let me go check the engine, make sure it's there. <laughs> Motherfucker. What's going on, what everyone? Um, first and foremost, I'd like to apologize for my lack of profanity uh, due to copyright claims and whatnot, and um, YouTube doesn't want to pay me because I swear too much. So, let's see what we got going on today. This is a nice Perrin header and up pipe. And the problem I'm having is these nice, thick stainless steel flanges have warped. So when you put a gasket in it, uh, it'll seal on the edges, but right here is a big gap. You could actually stick like a business card in there. So that's nice. I tried to have them milled and flattened, but that didn't really work out. So uh, we moved on to other things because I don't want to. The up pipe is like 220. The header itself is, I think, a thousand. Came on the car. Parent doesn't want to warranty it because I didn't buy it. I don't have the receipt. So these gaskets um, that go there come in layers, just like an onion. Um, so I cut one layer off each side near the bolt holes so the bolts are able to pinch a little bit farther than the phalange. So I'm hoping, I'm going to try it right now and hopefully it'll seal there and there. Um, this was the old gasket I did a test on. You can see how these are pinched pretty tight versus like there, there's a big gap. Same thing over here. So on, uh, I only did it on one side on that one. This one I did it on two sides. So I'm hoping it seals. I got these feeler gauges. Um, I am able to fit this all the way into the middle of the pipe. Maybe not with one hand though. Let's see. Well, I can't do it with one hand, but take my word for it. I shove this thing all the way into the middle. Exhaust leaks are bad here. Anywhere else after the turbo, I don't care if it leaks, you know? So, let's see if this works. I'm going to unbolt it and put this new gasket in and then pray to mechanical Jesus. So, uh, they have like this inner ring. It's a little bit raised. Um, that is sealing. Let's see, look at that. So we can't get this in there anymore into the actual pipe. Oh, there we go. But, you can still move the gasket on the outside. So, that's kind of a win-ish. Uh, it's definitely super close. So, I'm going to try putting in 180 degrees to what it is. You know, like with the holes. I'm going to put it in sideways. See if it seals like that. And, if it does, I'm going to cut off just like at the bolt holes one more layer which will leave me with probably like three or four more. Yeah, so let's so try totally lied. Um, I put both gaskets on and it's super tight now. I uh, can't even get the feel of it in there. Um, even on the ends, I mean, that's perfect. And I really like this because it didn't involve me spending another $1,300. That right there is $1,300. So here's the rest of the parts I got left for the thing. You know, intake, clutch, starter, um, intercooler piping, so and radiator and condenser. So we're doing pretty good here. Um, now that this is complete, that was a big weight off my shoulders because I'm going to put this on the car, connect it to the turbo motor, uh, put the clutch on, and then the motor is going in the car, which will be better that way. And then... So, <laughs> I have a question to ask you guys. Um... Basically, the whole build I did was exactly how it was before. Same cams, injectors, turbo. The only thing that's different about it is the short block. Uh, it's IAG short block instead of a... Uh, it's basically a built short block before. It just had wide scope pistons and some type of rods. Stock Subaru crank. This current motor has um, IAG rods, I believe. Cosworth pistons. Stock Subaru crank. Should I retune it? My theory is, for at least break-in, uh, I can get, you know, a thousand miles of not boosting it. You know, what's going to really be different? Maybe the compression ratio by, like, the tiniest bit? So let me know what you think. Also, did I swear this whole time? I'm not really sure. Trying not to swear is like trying to do the speed limit. That just don't happen. A Subaru like me, 
Um, I got a Killer Bee Baffle. This uh, can easily be cleaned. Uh, reused, 40 bucks. Uh, I got a Killer Bee Pickup as well. Probably wouldn't recommend using it because I had rod bearing and metal in the oil. But if you want this in the stock pan, 40 bucks as well. So, um, uh, yeah. I'm pretty much done with this. I don't want to work on it anymore. Probably have like 150 hours into the stupid thing. This right here. I mean, I spent $300 replacing the hoses on my Subaru motor. Um, look at this. Regular hose. There's two like pre-molded 90s here. I could find at Advanced Auto for like five bucks. This is going to be a nice, cheap, fun project. It's a motor out of a turbo coupe. And I have an ugly Ford Ranger that's going to be a total sleeper. Hopefully make around 250 wheel horse uh, currently because you can't really screw the uh, ECUs too much. You actually have to run like a standalone if you want to go crazy. But it's going to be a good time. I just can't wait to work on this. This is fun. Um, the timing belt kit for this, $25 for a Gates timing belt. The timing belt kit for this, I think it was $350. Jesus. So, I'm more excited about this than this car because I've already driven it. And once I put the motor back in and get it running again, it's just going to blow up again 30,000 miles. That's just what they do. Still got to clean out this whole engine bay. But that's it for the night for me, yo. New day. So, it is a new day. Just got done cleaning the garage. Because a nice clean garage makes everything go better. Um, cleaned out the engine bay too, all the leaves and whatnot. Right now I'm taking off this bar. Um, this is pretty much the front bumper support slash. Uh, it's part of a parent kit for the intercooler. And it did not uh, stand the test of time. It's rusting pretty bad. Oh god, it's four rust. You hear it? That's weight I could be saving. Damn, I don't know how I'm going to get that out of there. But I'm going to clean this off with the wire brush and paint it. So I got this thing all cleaned up. There's so much rust inside of it, it's not even funny. I got this beautiful color of flat black. I'm going to send it on there and see how it comes out. So that's back on. Definitely looks better. The inside is like rotting out as well. I can't hear it. If you shake it, it, there's just tons of rust inside. So that's probably not going to last much longer. I got to clean up the bell housing. I uh, started removing the old wideband, the innovative blah, blah, blah. Um, it did work good, and then it stopped working right, as, right around when the motor blew up. So I could say the same thing about the motor. Yeah. Got this AEM wideband. Um, I don't want the X1. It, uh, it actually displays um, in the tenth digit, so there, there's actually an extra one there. Uh, seven, eight, point, and then there'd be two numbers. So it's uh, more exact, I guess. It's just going to blow up in 30,000 miles anyway, so I don't even know why I care. But it's nice. It's, um, I think, 160 bucks, which is really not bad. It's supposed to be one of the best ones they make. So, I'm sure somebody's got an opinion about that. So, let me know. I'm just installing this uh, EEM wideband. Um, one wire basically just goes to the oxygen sensor, which is right here. It's pretty simple. Uh, so, you just run that from where you're putting it to the gauge. Then, the second connector here. Um, basically, just uh, power and ground, red and black. Um, the other ones are optional for just outputs. I guess when you're on it on the dyno they can hook up to it. So uh that's a pretty damn simple install if I've ever seen one. So uh I already got the wire run, I'll show you that and all the wires I'm not gonna use. Um I don't know if you notice, but they're all cut at different lengths, so they don't have a possibility of connecting. I'm gonna do a wrap of tape, add a wire, wrap of tape, add a wire, so they're all together. But yeah, and one cool thing I like about the, the the AM products here. I guess this is with all of them. But you open the box, <laughs> and there's the dude. There's the creator. Or, I don't know. It's pretty cool that he puts his face on all his products, right? So there she is. 
Looks pretty good. Um, the only downside is they got about six feet of coils under the dash, but there's a damn good amount of room down here for it. So um, just gotta splice the power and ground. Look at this haggardness I found from the previous owner. There's like these things are shoved in the the socket. I don't know, man. <laughs> Who does that? Want to know a secret though? I'm gonna reuse it. So I want to do uh, start the engine on new fuel. This car's been sitting for a while. I only got like an eight tank, so I'm just cycling the key. Um, it's pumping into a gas can. Um, I was gonna um, pop the sending unit out and just pump it out with one of my inline fuel pumps, but I cycled the key like 10 times and uh, it made like a gallon of gas really fast. So got my five gallon, you know, it's going into that. It's got some gas in it. So I'll be dumping this gas which used to be 93, allegedly, into my Ford Ranger to go pick up the motor for this. Yeah, yeah. There is your install. And I got the tank empty, which is nice. So we'll start with fresh gas, brand new wideband, pretty much brand new motor. My Bluetooth Alpine, which I miss very much. I gotta do this uh, shifter bushing. That's in gear. Front to back isn't bad, side to side is bad. So that's in gear. That's out of gear in gear it's like two inches of oh shit that's like two inches of play so I got the uh, thing it's just not fun to put in so we'll see how that goes it's not a bad night working on it um, I gotta go pick up the motor put this header on it the clutch then it's ready to go in but I got this bar painted um, the Wide band is wired to here. I just gotta throw the um, oxygen sensor in there. Um, might wait on that till after I start it the first time, just so all the assembly loop and everything burns off. Um, and pumped out the tank, so that's a plus. I just gotta clean the output shaft and the bell housing and the where the motor mounts go. And I will be throwing her in there. So that'll probably be the next video. Uh, will be the header and the clutch and putting the motor in, which is going to be a good time. Thank you for watching again. And uh, if you just saw this video, I mean, check out my other ones. Please subscribe. I need it. Thank you.